Welcome to Dynamic Auto Painter 7. In this series, we will go through the major new features in a bite-sized videos. Today's video is about video. In the version 7, we added an easy way to capture the painting process into a video. To do so, before the painting starts, you need to go to the tab called Advanced and enable capturing of the video frames. Then just start the painting process. The video frames will be captured at regular intervals. If you want to pause capturing of the frames while the painting continues, click on the text that says Capturing. After the process is finished, go to the tab Final Output and click on Save Video button. We will first use the internal AVI video format. Now click Process. Enter the name, and all you need to do now is wait for the process to finish. While the video frames are processing, let's talk about the settings. The first number is the total length of the video in seconds. The dry reveal step is not actually captured, so a transition can be added, preventing the video to have a visible jump cut. The same apply to the post-processing transition. And then we can specify how long to hold the finished frame on the screen. Because the actual captured video frames are quite large, it is a good idea to resize the frames so the video won't be unnecessary too large. And here it is. The internal AVI format uses JPEG compression and it is usually well supported by video editing applications. If you like to use MP4 format, you need to first download FFmpeg binaries. A link to the distribution site is provided. Scroll down to release builds and download FFmpeg release essentials binary package. Then you need to unzip the package. Inside, go to the bin folder and locate ffmpeg.exe. This file can be also copied somewhere else as it is self-contained and has all the necessary libraries. When you select MP4 format for the first time and click Process, you will be asked to locate the file we just extracted. The rest is pretty much the same. You will know it is working, when at the end of the process a console window will appear, showing you the actual video encoding. That's not all. Using this process we can also create VR videos. First, let's find some suitable 360 degree panoramas. For 360 degree panoramas it is a good idea to increase the resolution of the canvas. Now go to 360 tab. Convert the image into cubic coordinates. Simply press this button. And press the paint button. Make sure you are still in the frame capture mode. Now it is a good time to make coffee as this process may take some time. When it is finished just go to Final Output tab. Click on Save Video button. Now you have a few more options. The frame will need to be converted back to normal or equirectangular mapping. You will also need to create MP4 or later convert AVI to MP4. Remember, we are working with hundreds of very large frames. Once it is done, you can try to play the video. It is still not VR, but don't worry, we are getting there. For this last step, we need to download Google Spatial Media Metadata Injector. This tells the video player that the video is in a VR format. Now open the panorama video file we just created. Yes, my video is spherical. And just inject metadata. 
This will take only a couple of seconds and you will get a new, metadata injected video. If you play this new file in a video player, you will be able to pan and look around as the video plays. This injected video can be directly uploaded to YouTube. It may take a bit longer for YouTube to process VR videos, but once it is done it will work in YouTube player. If you have a VR headset, such as Oculus Quest 2, you can watch this video on YouTube VR app and be inside painting as it paints around you. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.